Hello and welcome to another alias modeling video. Um, I made this spaceship in about four or five hours and this video is more about how I go from zero to to a complete structure in um, in uh, in general you know um, usually I don't I don't uh, I don't I'm not a fan of speed modeling because um, every the, all the videos I've seen here in YouTube on speed modeling it's always the results are always extremely amateurish and even this um i don't i'm not a really big fan of this spaceship because it's just one day of work you know i would use this as maybe as a base to get something cooler done or i would if this was a portfolio piece of mine i would work on it for at least another like week um, but that doesn't mean that we can't use it to sort of teach you guys how i approach modeling uh, from zero to to getting this result and through each step I'll, I'll stop and slow down the video and um, and try to explain what's going on in my head so uh, this is definitely gonna be a long video and um, but I hope you guys um, learn a couple of uh, lessons on how I approach modeling from zero to a, a finished model but remember it, everything takes a lot of time with everything with with um, learning how to model and also just modeling in general you know this is not this is um i did this really quickly just to just just for this video honestly but um yeah i hope you guys like it and um and we'll start with the with the curve network so here i'm actually starting to develop this form that i kind of have in my head I'm uh, I'm gonna start by by developing the the side profile, and if you notice, I keep everything extremely simple at this step, and I'm sort of building off itself. Um, you know, um, I'm trying to I'm trying to keep it so that all the angles are still sort of relating to each other, and. Um, and it's very, very uh, uh, free flowing right now. I'm not really thinking too much. I'm just, I'm just sort of trying to, to figure out what this form is in my head. And um, and as I start building this curve network, I, um, it, it becomes a little clearer and clearer in my head. It's the same. Um, you know, a lot of times people don't, uh, for some reason, they don't think that modeling can have the same approach as digital modeling as it as um as clay modeling or even as sketching you know um i see one of the mistakes i see when people start to model something it's that they try to find the final result immediately like they're they're not really thinking of building from the outside in you know um whenever you sketch or whenever you do um a clay model you know the the laws are very are are very not i don't want to call them laws but proper technique are they're always they're very similar as in as in you build through your you draw through you know and then you find out you f you find the 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 primitive um uh basics of the of the form you're trying to develop and then from that you you uh you start to add the curvature and you add everything else but but um first you need to sort of find the 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 primitive cube sort of and um and as as you as I start to develop these curve networks, these curve networks to me aren't law. You know, a lot I see a lot of people. Um, they and this is definitely a, a different design um, or modeling um, approach. Uh, but I see a lot of people who their curve network is basically the they take a really long time in uh, in making sure every curve is perfect. And in the end, also. I don't know. It's it's sort of um, unless you actually start surfacing it, it's really not not um. It's almost impossible to find the proper curve in space. Um, in in the next step, you will see how I um how I take this and and I use it as a as also as another guide, you know. And and if you notice here, I'm still I'm still not adding any crown to any of my volumes. And I'm connecting. I'm, I'm sort of almost developing a mesh of uh, of what that form is. You know, a lot of times I see the people they want to sort of start with the design elements and then um, and then figure out how to sort of get them in space. And I always think of it as finding the volumes first, and then and then off those volumes, slowly finding the design um, elements. 
you know so um so i'm very i'm very strict in in how i approach modeling um because this way i there's a lot of structure to to my approach and um and here you, it's you can see that that it's very um uh you know it's it's very basic you know um uh i i thought i had a, i was gonna i was gonna add some wheel wells but but they um in the end once i started to develop it more and more I, I changed it up, you know, and that's also one of the reasons why I keep everything very simple right now because this is very, very, um, uh, there's, there's a lot of room for movement right now, you know, so, um, so the looser you are with it, the, the better. So here I'm just adding the, the rear, like little winglets and, um, and I'm not, I'm not being that, that, um, I'm not being that. That I'm not taking too much time on them because right now I know that that in, in curves it's difficult to tell how that surface is going to be twisting and how they're going to relate to each other unless you actually start surfacing them. So I keep it fairly simple and um, and from at this point I'll just I'll just skip ahead and we'll review the we'll review the the main form and and how we're and how uh, and where it's at and what are the next steps from here. Okay, so from here, uh, all we've really done is made this sort of gem-like uh, curve network, you know, because it's all these are all just line one degree lines that are sort of like connected with each other, and um, and from there, I'm gonna start adding volume to all of them. So I'll 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 select them and then I'll change the degrees to like three degrees, and then I'll start adding the volume, right? And then what you're gonna see me do uh, in the sped up version too is I'll, um, I'll start extending these back and adding the transitional surfaces. But before I do that, what I do is I'll, once I add all the volume I wanted, I'll control copy these and paste them and put them on, on another layer, right? We'll put this layer like as a reference layer. And then you're gonna see me start extending these back like that. and then adding adding a, a blend curve between them. And what I'm doing here it, when I when I do this is all I'm doing is I'm sort of uh, I'm sort of, I want to see how this will look once I start adding the volume and the and the transitions. So um so I can I can sort of this for me to me is a quick way of, of starting to analyze that aspect of it you know and 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 since it's still it's still very um, it's still very primitive at this point it's it's easy for me to sort of like look at it and do any big changes that I want like you know if I want to lower this or, or do whatever I, I, I could and um, and when I and, when, and like let's say once I do these, I um, I want to lower something, right? Instead of um, instead of uh, uh, going into if I if I move, if I go into my the old one, instead of like doing uh, doing this and then maybe something like that, you know what I do is I'll I'll um, it depends on how complex it is, but most of the time what I do is I get it back to one degree, and then lower it and then add the volume again and this um uh once you get more advanced you could do you know you could do a little more free form and, and not have to go back you know but um but this really makes sure that that um that my 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 curves have a very constant look to them you know and then i put and then um and then from this we'll surface it but um but uh but that's the whole point of of, the, of this step is adding the volumes and then doing a quick a quick curve network that kind of like will, will give me a preview of, of what I what I'm gonna do. But I'm gonna always use this sort of surface network to develop my actual surface, not not the not the extended back curves. So um, so yeah, um, here here you'll see you'll see how I do that. Here you can see that I'm just doing what I did in the in the previous uh, segment. I'm just adding a little more degrees and then I'm adding volume. So you know when you really think about what I'm really doing is first I'm, I'm, I'm joining those I'm finding those curves in space 
and then I'm adding curvature before I add any of the transitions or anything like that. And I, I keep using this sort of theory in, um, in all aspects of my modeling. Right now, I'm just using it for a curve network. And um, uh, but but when I use it for surfacing or, or for developing my designs, it's all the same. I always develop the world around it first and then and then slowly start adding volumes, slowly start cutting in and and um, and adding all the, the tricky transitions. You know, um, um, a lot of people I see when they approach modeling, they sort of um, they get either they get overwhelmed or a lot of times they just they they go way too far ahead without actually focusing on the the structure of it, you know, and um, and just remember when you're modeling your own thing. I don't. This video wasn't meant to to for you guys to replicate this. It was is for you guys to see how I approach it and then do your own thing, you know, because because uh, what I see a lot is um you know there's millions of ways to do all the the different how to model and also how to su surface uh. uh how to surface uh, um, uh, these curve networks. And a lot of times I see, you know, people are like, are asking me like, oh, how do I do this? And how do I th do that? And I, I, can't, I can give you a solution, but there's millions of ways of doing almost all of the, every, every aspect of this. So um, um, to me, it's more important for, your, for you guys to, or for when I'm teaching it, for you guys to have understanding of getting proper structure versus how do I solve this intersection? All right, now for the fun part, the actual surfacing. Um, and for for this uh, section of the of the process, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop the speed uh, sped up form a couple times, and just to sort of focus on different concepts and and um, and tell you guys the reasons of, of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, right here, I'm just quickly developing the the main slabs of this volume, um, and I, I'm just using the uh, <clears throat> typical um, square tool. But here is when I really uh, this to me this top these top two surfaces. Um, th this is where they actually this is actually the basis of the whole model. I I started off right there, and as you see there, instead of make, using the rest of the curve as a as um, the rest of the curve network to square them up, I actually use the rail tool. And uh, and after this, I, I do the same in the back. And I wanna I'm gonna stop the video uh, at that point, and I'm gonna showcase. I'm gonna explain a little bit of why I did that, and how that gives me better control over over my over my form. Because what's really happening is, like I said before, that curve network. It's just more of a of a suggestion as opposed to law to me because um, I, I was sort of guessing how those surfaces are going to line up but now that, I, that I'm actually surfacing them I can use different techniques to, to have even more structure so let me stop the video right here and I'll showcase why I'm doing those things so I want to get back and slow it down and explain to you guys exactly why I'm doing what I'm doing so, um, you know, I have this curve network here and I could start, you know, um, squaring up all of these and making them all surfaces. Uh, if I press my square tool, right, I got a, I got a hockey dub, remember that, right? Uh, and, and the ones back here too. But the thing is, like I said before, my curve network isn't isn't law to me um, because if I would if I would curve it like that, if you see here, there's a lot of actual twisting in that in that surface. It's not very controlled. Um, I learned I learned a lot of my um, modeling theory on when I'm when I was just looking at how clay modelers model because they when they when they're sculpting the form with a knife. You know they're not they're they're not twisting their hand. They're trying to keep their hand as steady and as parallel to to whatever form they're trying to reach. So using the rail tool, it's the same sort of concept. That's like this is my knife, and this is the profile I'm trying to sort of establish, right? And so I hit it, and now I have a nice a nice clean. If uh, we go to here and sweep mode parallel. I have a nice and clean uh, um, cut, so that so that um, now I now it's uh, now now I know that that this this surface is is very there's no twisting in it. It's all it's all very clean. 
and then from there I can I can use my extend tools right object edit extend and extend it back to what I want here and up here like that and then when I want to add more um, you know if I didn't like the how, how they bent this way all I do is I, I turn on my CV and then I use my my uh, control CV tool which I have it hot queued up also and then I I, uh, I select these and then I push them down so so here you could really see just how how my curve network how much it was sort of bending the the wrong it was bending the I bent this way too for way too far back compared to this and um, and especially maybe later in this in when I'm modeling it I think I do I want to push this back but um, but there's there's other ways of doing that um, but the 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 first thing I'm really focusing on is establishing a proper form first uh, same thing with with this see if I see if I see it like through the gun barrel like this you see it doesn't it's not it's not very balanced so if I if I rail this right see we could see where how far back um, uh, how, how much farther out this was than, than this than this railing because if I look down the railing like this you see it's a uh, um, it's it's basically as straight as, as you can get it you know wait let me make sure that's parallel there you go if I if I go to object edit and patch position and I turn it up see everything is nice and nice and clean if I let's say let's delete that and if I would have used if I would have used uh, the square tool for this right and then use my object edit patch position See, it's really, it's really. See here, you could actually, you could see exactly how much is twisting. So to me, it's not about. It's the obviously, obviously, if that's what you want in your form, that's great. You know, I don't, to, I'm no, I don't really because there's millions of of different design and, and surface, um, um, surface theories and 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 all that. But to me, it's more about control, as in, as in, okay, yeah, you twist it, but first show me. Show me um, uh, before you twist it. First, get it set up correctly. Once you know how to set everything up with the minimum amount of twisting and everything as structured as possible, then we can start. Um, then we can start adding, you know, um, um, changing it up. But we, but we already have a very solid base to start with. And and then here, <clears throat> and then we'll we'll just I'll just keep going with the speed, with the speed um, uh, sped up uh, video. And and you'll see. And then once I finish the actual structure, we'll, you'll see what what um what I'm talking about. Okay, so here I just continue to model my my um my exterior using that rail tool to keep everything as as straight as possible, and then manipulating that surface to get it where where I want it to go. And um and here you'll actually see how how um through through making making them all sort of talk to each other like that it actually once i once i reach the other end it actually gets really close to to what um what i wanted without really have without um without me doing too much uh extra work in bending anything or extending anything because we got we got um if you because that's how forms work in general if you if you um if they all have sort of relationships with themselves, they they end up you know finding each other in space. So um, <clears throat> here I just uh, you know typical uh, cleaning up the holes a bit and extending it out, and then like when I rail this to the next to the end of it, see uh, you can even see that that it, it got really close to the other surface, um, and from here. There's multiple ways of like um, you know making those surfaces connect with each other. You can project align them. Uh, what I do in this particular case is I intersect them, and then I trim convert them. Uh, and that's something I do all the time because trim convert, um, especially with simple things like that, it does a really nice job of um, of uh, rebuilding it with minimum amount of of uh, twisting or anything like that. And I always a lot. Of, I see a lot of people they overbuild and then trim 
and um, and then keep that overbuilt surface. But I always try to get edge to edge wherever I can. And here with the wing, what I do is I'm just getting that main surface and I'm extending it out. And then I, um, I add a little more degrees and then I make a trim convert to sort of get that wing in place. And see, so I base that wing off that main surface and um, <clears throat> And so now it's a lot cleaner and there's no twist and, and everything's like relating with it, um, itself. And that's basically what I'm trying to sort of um, showcase in this video that um, I try to always find a family for, for every surface there. You know, um, a lot of times I see people, they'll just start doing random shit everywhere and then they're sort of stuck um, trying to mesh everything together. And since they don't have no idea how to really, really control, and that's what you are as a, as a really high-end modeler. You're a surface designer, you know, you need to understand exactly what those surfaces are doing so you can control the highlights, you know. Um, and whatever method you use to me is completely fine. You know, there's millions of different ways to approach this. And, uh, and that's why also I'm not too technical about my videos because, you know, I, you could use the, the you could use a million tools for everything and i know how to use a, a lot of the tools you know i get a lot of um comments oh i didn't use this tool why didn't you use that tool and it's like i could have used any tool you know it's just the uh, is that i just didn't i just felt like in that moment i wanted to use that one in particular you know but since my theory is this is good then there's no real there's no real worry to me you know like if i would have used one or the other as long as as long as um as my theory is correct, most of the time my the the volumes will come out looking really good. And for and so here, as you see, with the bottom hole, I just did a quick <clears throat> some quick squares, and um, and and this is basically how how I finished uh, most of the 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 squared up surfaces. But as you can see in the top, we have um, a three sided surface. And there's a lot of things you could do um, to to figure this out. But um, what I do beforehand is I set up a straight line to remove that like a little bend in the middle. <clears throat> and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rail it across so that so that uh, um, so that one I have a, a clean a clean side surface, and two you don't want to ever surface. Uh, you don't ever want to make a surface that's like you know three degrees or uh, or I mean sorry uh, with three sided where all the all the nerves get, all the um, what are they called all the CVs get squished into one corner. Um, but before I actually do that, I actually lower everything a bit. Um, right now, that this is the whole point of this process. You know, like if it's still squared up like that, it's easy to make those movements. So here I add the I add the the curve. And then now I'm gonna I'm gonna um, surface it and then see uh, it, I even it, it even came out very close to to the other to the other surfaces and and if uh, um, you know uh, this kind of shows one that approaching it this way it's sort of like it's it's what the surfaces want to do you know I'm not forcing them to do anything so it gives me a lot of uh, it gives me a nice clean base to start with uh, and then here. I um I, I didn't I didn't since it's a three sided uh surface I didn't project uh, trim comfort I just um uh, project aligned it and then I trimmed it and as you see I wasn't positional because I don't need to make it positional right now I'm gonna add a fillet on top of it later so um so there's no point and uh, I want to review this at point right now so we could uh, we could really see see what's good and what's bad about it. So before we, we move on, I wanted to show you guys what the difference is between what, how I approach this versus if I would have just used this old network I built, you know, to to surface it without really using the, the previous method of, of, tr of straightening everything out. And even though in um, in this I, I uh, in this shading and since it's just like a cube right now, it's it's difficult to sort of tell. The difference I surfaced the other one and th and this is it you know and 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 I do know that that it's difficult to see the differences right but if I if I um, like for example if I evaluate the curvature right on this one 
Um, yeah, there isn't. It isn't constant in a couple of areas, but it's but it's very controlled. And if I go into this one and and see the curvature here, see now with these sort of analysis tools, we can start really seeing what what's the what's really happening here. You know, uh, right there, it's really bending in, and over here, it's it's really bending bending out. And so. Um, so 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 it's not really as clean as we would want it to be and um and this is what really sets apart uh, a professional versus versus someone who uh, what I like student work you know because because that's the main thing what I see uh, in in when I when I analyze student work is that is that they're not really focusing a lot on on um, what what it is that the, the what are the surfaces are doing and and it's honestly it's something that takes a very long time to understand and to see even as a professional so so um, so there's no um sh I don't want to call it shame you know or it's just it's just because there was a point in my career where I I just wanted to make cool shit without really understanding what these surfaces and volumes were doing. Um, but that's why I'm making these videos. So hopefully that that once you start, you can you can you know have as clean as po a start as clean as possible, and uh, and this honestly is like basically the basis of, of the of my model. And since I have a good solid base to start with, everything else sort of just just uh, falls in place. So if you see how I start to add the details, I, I'm, I'm extending all the main surfaces back and I'm moving everything around a little more a little more freely now because I know that my structure is really solid. So um, I, I have, a, since, I, since I start with something good, then I know that in the end everything's going to look like it belonged to each other, that they all, sp they all speak to themselves, they, it's very structured. And um, and I wanted to say that that in this sort of um, videos, you know, I don't really um, talk too much about the technical aspects of it because if you if you really see if you start to really like slow down these videos and see every every movement I make, I change I change uh, the ways I I model um, multiple times just because. There's so many options. Like I always tell people, you know, um, or or people who are are I'm teaching, you know, they're they're always like, okay, how do I do that? How do I do this? And and when I was in your position and when I was learning, um, I knew that there's there's five, ten different ways of doing everything. So I try to find it. You know, um, it's not. I could right now. I'll um, I want to stop it right here and I'll show you guys just making the the transition surface from from the top. Like just just that top, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll, I'll show you a couple ways of how I would do that. Okay, so this is what I ended up using for my for my uh, model. Um, but I'm just gonna show you guys the millions of ways, not millions, but all the different ways that you could do this, right? I mean, I'm not gonna show you guys, but my the the real point I'm trying to make here is that there's no real reason or you know, there's no reason for me to show you guys technically what I'm doing because there's so many ways. You know, if you're just learning, you have to sort of, um, you have to sort of challenge yourself to see how many different ways you could do it. Like for example, right now, I'm gonna insert. A cur this is how I did it in my in my video. I I inserted uh using my the insert tool, right? Object edit insert inserted a curve on surface, not a span, to here. And then to here, and then I trimmed them, and then I I used the blend curve to do this, like that, and then I squared this up, and then I made it so that one is curvature, and th and, and um, three is curvature, right? That's how I did it in the video. Okay, now let's not let's not use those, right? Okay, so instead of the insert tool, right? Instead of the insert tool, I could project a, a curve, right? There and there, something like that. All right, I could project a curve, right? And I'll trim it. 
uh, and then from the, from here to here I can use a freeform blend right okay that's a whole that's the same I just did the same sort of project but with the completely different tools okay what if I just want to what I could use a big ass fillet tool right I could just fillet these together right something like a hundred and I don't know maybe 50 oh wait way more than that 450 maybe 800 oh that's too much 550 Mm, 500. Mm, 400. Why is it so? Let's do explicit control. Um, and then we're gonna do a single surface. There you go. See, now I just use the fillet tool. Um, what else? Um, let's say my fillet tool didn't work. Uh, I could use my, um, my, what's it called? Offset, what is it? Tubular offset tool. And set up a tube here. You know, make that into like 80, right? Or more like, let's do 200, right? And then we got one there. And, or I should have selected, but let me delete this one. And then I'll use that tool again. So like both of them. There you go. Now I got that. That gave me a trim there. Trim there. Oh, whoops. Trim there. And now I can do something like that. Obviously, I didn't get the. Mm, hold on. We could in the freeform blend explicit control single surface. Uh, there you go. Let's see. <clears throat> see, I didn't, I didn't get positional, but you know what? I could untrim it, and then I could use my project a line and project a line here, and maybe add a little more. Oh wait, there you go. Oh wait, no, that's. Uh, Something like that, if I wanted to. Or maybe you could just add more degrees here. Like that. There you go. See, I just, this this one little transition, I just did this, uh, what, the four different versions using completely different tools. Um, this is what I'm, hold on, I still got more. Uh, instead of that, what if I, what if I extend, extend this back like that? Extend this back like that, and then freeform blend that. See, I could do it like that. There's there. I don't. I don't like doing that. I like. I always like to keep it theoretical. But if I needed to, I could. Right. Um. That's the whole. That's really one of the biggest lessons I always try to teach people because I always get the same. You know, they're oh, how do you do this? How do I do that? And there's when you know you have to go through the, the documentation, go through YouTube videos, see there's a million ways to do everything I'm telling you. And that's why and that's why I don't focus too much on that because it's like it's like, yeah, I did it this way, but what what other ways are there? You know? What's what's really happening here, right? If I what's really happening like I could intersect, project, convert, right? Um what what really is happening here? All all I all I need to do is cut this up, right? So I need to ask myself, how can I cut this? I could project a curve and trim it. I could extend it back. I could detach it. Um, uh, I could use a tubular offset to put a, tr a, cur a curve on surface. Like I, I all I know is I want to cut it and add a transitional surface. A, a fillet tool does ba does that automat does both of those actions automatically. Maybe I want more control. Maybe I want to cut it in a different place. 
you know, a uh, freeform blend is uh, is the same thing as putting two blend curves and squaring them up. It's just it sort of saves you some time, but there's less control. You know, all those things. There's a million ways to do everything, and each way has uh, its its pros and cons. And if you truly want to become good at anything you do, you need to figure out what all those ways are. I know all all these tools. I know them by heart. All their all their um all their different their different settings all that shit i know all of that because um and that's my job i'm supposed to understand how how i can the best ways or multiple ways of approaching every problem because as you're as you're working on this you're gonna um in your career all of a sudden and you'll see in this video uh, a tool which just won't work and you're like oh, and what are you gonna do like you're not gonna go up to your boss and go hey if something's wrong with my the, my alias it's like it's like if that happens then your boss is going to come up to me and then i'm going to fix the problem because even if there's everything wrong with my alias if there's a solution i'm going to find it you know so you have to uh if you want to become a professional in my eyes you have to understand every every tool and 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 because you know they spent money developing these tools so you know there's a, a rail surface uh you know you could have something straight um you know it's all it's all um it could all help you in your in your career, you know, and um, and even if you don't use them, it's always a good it's good um, thing to just kind of go through it, you know. It doesn't take that long to learn all this stuff, you know. Um, but yeah, so so uh, we'll continue on seeing how I how I keep going and and finish off this main form. All right, so here I'm just um, sort of a regular regular um, design modeling, you know. Um, uh, to me after that's the real like the beauty of of the stuff we did previously because that was where all our structure came in and and it really makes our whole the, our lives a lot easier later you know like at this point because um because regardless of what i do um as long as i is the structure is relatively good and my transitions are good it's gonna look it's gonna look fine it's gonna there's not gonna have any twisting it's gonna look very structured um you know, it's, it gives me a good position to start. Um, and and right now, uh, let's see, what am I doing? I'm, uh, there, I start adding the starting the secondary, like the fillets and stuff. Um, and and then here you'll see, I'll, I'll quickly do the the roof. The, um, um, and like how I said, like see, I just I just insert and then I um, oh no, first I do the blend curve to see what type of profile I want. And then when I find that, I um, oh I do the I do a project trim blend point blend curves between them and then i surface those see but obviously like i like you just saw before um that that little you know 10 seconds there there was there was a millions of other of other ways to to um not millions but you know you know what i'm saying <clears throat> see on one side i added a i inserted um uh i inserted a curve and the other side i projected it you know it all depends on on what what you want to do and what's uh what what's uh what's the cleanest solution you know and a lot of times any solution is really okay you know as long as your base is right then you know if i would have those roofs i surfaced if i would have put them on next to each other like the differences between them would be so minimal that it's like it's not really that big of a um <clears throat> not really that big of a deal you know because they're their look comes from its underlying base which is already what we what we uh, what we were talking about mostly today <clears throat> here i'm just using um i'm using their their um uh I, i'm tr i always try to keep everything very very uniform in the sense of um you know where i cut them and all that i always try to make all my surfaces meet up um, even if like, let, for example, a fillet doesn't exactly line up, I'll rebuild that whole fillet more custom just to, just to have things line up. Um, if you go through my other videos, like, especially if you see Electra and it's wireframe, it's really clean. You know, I always try to, once I establish all the transitional surfaces, I sort of look back at the form and I see where I can, uh, I could change up the, the the secondary surfaces to make everything a lot cleaner. And here I'm just checking what type of core I wanna I wanna run uh, run against it. The other thing too is um uh, when I'm when I was modeling this too, I had to sort of keep in the back of my head my that timer where uh, that's why I don't really I'm not a fan of the speed modeling 
because because um, you know there's a lot, a lot of stuff here. I'm just doing it because I know that I, I, I and that happens in your career, you know, where it's like okay, I only have one day to do it. I have to figure it out, you know. So you can't really take the pleasures of of um, of um, of taking your time. So the first design solution is the design solution. But I don't. To me, I would have rather you know spent a week on on all this and see right here there's a i have i'm having an error where i can't i can't project uh the curve and i can't intersect it for some reason for some reason um alias just doesn't want to trim any of that surface you know um I, I don't know if it was my own error or um, uh, an alias error you know um uh, but how i fixed it is i just i let the fillet tool um build across it and and use that as a trimming tool because i knew that the trimming wasn't that important but if you notice i didn't stop when when um when it didn't work you know i uh, i kept i kept trying to find a different solution and um and and the fillet tools uh, uh solved that problem in particular and then here see i connect the curves to to uh, each other uh, or the fillets to each other and then i do a quick um skinning and then I do um, and then I do the curvature. I align the the edges, but I could have used um, I could have used the square tool. I could have done anything. You know, here I think uh, I do. I see in this, and on the, in this I do the same thing. I skin them and then I align them. But it's not it doesn't really matter what what I would have done. <clears throat> and and see now now um after after this video um uh and you'll see here like for the, for example for these tricky transitions. I um I really I sort of to me they're really sloppy, you know, um, which is fine because this project in general is sloppy, you know. Um, uh, it's really it's really that's sort of the that's why I don't like any of the speed form stuff. So so um, but you know you could still you could still sort of come up with a cool little speed form in a day, and then and then you'll you'll have um. You'll have something you could use as maybe as a basis or background stuff, you know. So or just practice in general. But um, but just remember, take your time with all this stuff. <clears throat> there doesn't no no need to to hurry. Um, the this the first video is gonna end um, after I do the main the these main volume transitions of of volumes of the of the main body, and. And the next, the second part video is I'm gonna develop the wings and then add the the details um, uh, of this of this form, and, um, and and to me that that's even more like that's just technical stuff. So, um, but it has a it, it's gonna have a lot of the same um, lessons that I that I do now, you know. So here I'm trying to develop a, a curve in that, and then I have to extend it and then trim it again to give me one line there and then I square it up see these are all um uh like ball corners and and fillet transitions uh that's all stuff that you know the only way to really learn is to do thousands of them like I've done thousands and thousands of I, I would guess I would get almost over definitely over like 15 20 thousand of these uh sort of transitions and I remember one time, uh, one of my the best ways to, for me to learn was I, uh, I was working for um, this one company and I had to do a grill, and each each little corner had different ball corners and a different number of surfaces and angles, and you couldn't automate any of that. You just had to get in there and and do every single corner, and the grill had over like probably over over two hundred corners, so. Um, so it really, it really, I remember I, it was just all day just solving these sorts of problems. And, and after a while, you start to understand these ball corners and how you can move the surfaces around and, and make it so that, so that you get the cleanest solution you can get. Um, but on, honestly, it takes, it just takes a long time to, to learn all that. You know, you just, you just need to practice. So yeah, let, let's go over the the model where it's at now, and uh, and the, this video will, will be uh, done. <laughs> okay, so so far in this video, this is basically what we got done, and um, it might seem very simple, you know. Um, but if I if I open my final model, 
See, it's all it's all based if I and then I turn on the wings. You know, it's all everything is based off itself. So it's really, you know, when you see this, I know it's it's hard to sort of like like see and um uh it, it's you know it's all it's basically done you know when when um or all the work all, all the design work was done at this point you know and and after that once you added all the fill all the detail it looks more real but it's still the same the same thing where it's based off itself so so as long as the main foundation is structured the the rest looks really really nice you know and so in the next video we're gonna build this and this and this and and it's gonna be very similar to what i did in this one as in uh, everything's gonna be based off each other off surfaces and it's not kind of even like especially this one you'll see it's a micro it's like the mini version of this project you know and um and so yeah i'll i'll um i'll release that video a little later but um i hope you guys enjoyed this video in particular and um i hope i hope you guys learned some lessons and i didn't sorry for making it so long but you know these things they just that's the only way to learn honestly i always tell people and i always try to remind people in the end of my videos all it really is is a shit ton of work you know a lot of practice a lot no video is going to make you good this video you might have learned some lessons but honestly you didn't really get better you know like uh just Get, get keep practicing and develop all of these as much, as many as you can all the free time you can because that's the only way to do it so anyways um i hope you guys enjoyed this video and um uh yeah um i'll, I'll see you guys next time bye bye